Hey guys, today we are going to be looking at a little political cartoon uh, for this unit. And it's an important one because they like to use it on the star test and nine week assessments. It's a very famous political cartoon from the, uh, this, this unit, this time period. And then we're gonna do a little review for the unit as well on here. Um, get us ready for our next CFA, make sure we kind of got a good understanding for the unit. So this political cartoon, it's called The Critical Period. And remember, political cartoons are drawn um, by artists to kind of represent something happening in that period of time. They're a primary source, right, as long as they're from that time period. And people make them to kind of make a statement about what's going on in the world at that time. So you see the time period here is 1783 to 1789. And if you remember, um, 1783, that is the date of the Treaty of Paris, which ended the Revolutionary War. So the colonists gained their independence from Great Britain, right? They fight the war for independence, the Revolutionary War, get their independence. Now they're their own country. They got to figure out what they're going to do now. And this, this cartoon kind of shows those first few years um, and the challenge, you know, what was happening and the, the challenges and how you know, scary of a time it was and dangerous of a time it was for the country. So let's look at the questions to help us kind of understand it. Who is on the boat on the water? What is the boat holding them together? So you see here, we have all these guys packed into this little boat. And if you look above their heads, it says VA, SC, NC, MD, GA, Connecticut, New York, Okay, those are abbreviations for the colonies, Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania. Okay, and they're all on this little boat that says USA Articles of Confederation. So we, like we just said, who was on the boat? The 13 original colonies. And what is the boat holding together? That's the Articles of confederation and what is the artist confederation if you remember that's the first government of america so remember at this time period they just signed the treaty ending the war they have their freedom and this was their first government that they created so the 13 states there were the colonies and other states are held together by this little dinky boat that was the artist confederation remember the artist confederation it had a lot of weaknesses we used our hands to remember all the weaknesses um, and that's why it's like this little dinky boat. And if you look, it's going down this river, this dangerous looking river with all these rocks uh, that's called Independence. So they have their independence, they're going down the river, but it's, as you can see here, it's, it's, it's super dangerous. Um, it's asking us next question, what happened in the years leading up to this cartoon? That's kind of what we discussed, right? This was the year of the Treaty of Paris. Before that, they're fighting um, the Revolutionary War. against Britain. All right, so now they have their freedom afterwards. Um, it says, what is a country moving towards? You look, they're in the boat, they're in the river of independence, but they're moving towards this waterfall. And at the bottom of the waterfall, it says anarchy. And this is what political cartoons do. Like they make statements through pictures in a clever way. So the boat, they're independent, but they're moving towards anarchy. They're gonna, they might fall down towards this pit of anarchy and what anarchy is is um like mayhem chaos disorganization uh if you think of like if you're batman fan you think of the joker he is a big fan of anarchy when people are just going crazy and the government doesn't know what to do that's what they're saying the united states is moving towards under the artist confederation in their first few years of independence so you're right moving towards anarchy because the government is failing. Like we learned about, the Arctic Confederation was not successful. Right now it was too weak. They couldn't raise money. They couldn't raise taxes. They had no army for defense. So it's just a big mess, and they're heading towards anarchy if they don't fix it. So why might this period be called the critical period? Okay, this word critical, right? It means a few different things. If you're being critical of a person, that means like you're being negative towards them or judging them. But critical, if you say it's like a critical time in your life, that just means it's an important time. It's called the critical period 
because look what's happening, right? They almost fell into anarchy. The country could have been doomed, right? They're fa the government's failing. The states aren't working. If you look at they look like they don't know what's going on. They're all over the place. Um, so the country could have failed, right? It just be, it was a brand new country, right? There's a group of colonies that came together, but they were failing, and the country could have broken apart or been taken over again. Great Britain and other countries looking at them like like they were a mess. They could have easily been taken over, but they were able to kind of figure their stuff out and avoid, you know, falling into anarchy or becoming, you know, no longer a country. So it's called the critical period because the country almost failed in its first years of being independent. Okay, but what ended up saving the country from this doom of falling into anarchy? They realized that the Artists Confederation was no good. It was not strong enough. It was a weak government. So the Founding Fathers met up in Philadelphia at the Constitutional Convention and rewrote the government into the Constitution. Right. And the Constitution ended up being a very strong government that lasted for a long time. Right. 200 years later, the Constitution is still a law of land. It's considered to be one of the best legislative pieces ever created and still the way our government operates. And it was during this critical period where the country almost failed that they were able to create this, this successful new government and save the country. So that's the idea of that cartoon there. Number five says, practice the fingers for the Ten Amendments. Write one example of a finger mo movement below. So for this one, we're actually, once everybody's done with their ad puzzle, we're gonna practice that together. But you could go ahead, you should remember at least one from yesterday, and that's what you're gonna write there, an example of at least one. Next we have, what does FAMGAP stand for? And remember this, this was an acronym to help us remember, um, to help us remember, uh, about federalism. So the F stands for federalism, right? This is how help us remember who are the famous fa uh, federalists and anti-federalists. So F is federalism or federalist. Either one would much be the same thing. The A is our first big federalist. He's Alexander Hamilton. All right, he was a new person in this unit. He's gonna be a big part of our next unit as well. He go on to create the National Bank. He was a wealthy, um, businessman and economist so he's big with money and he's going to help figure out the country's economic issues with the federal government then we have james madison remember james madison i'm going to put in there just, just got to remember this father of the constitution All right every time you do fam gap you don't need to remember that but we want to put that in there because that's the most important thing to remember about james madison so that's the uh, FAM part, all right, the M is Madison. Now for the GAP part, G is George Mason. A is for Anti-Federalists. And George Mason, I want to add in, he wrote the Bill of Rights. So remember, the Bill of Rights is part of the Constitution which the Federalists like because it creates a big national government, but the Bill of Rights um, is favored by the Anti-Federalists because they're for people's and states' rights, which the Bill of Rights protects. And George Mason was the, the main author and proponent of that. He also wrote the Virginia um, Bill of Rights as well. Before that, that influenced the Bill of Rights. A is Anti-Federalists because that's the gap part of the Anti-Federalists. And P is for Patrick Henry. If you remember him, he was the one who said, give me liberty or give me death back in last unit during the revolution. But um, he stuck around for the writing the constitution. He was one of the main anti-federalists. So there you have it. Federalists, Alexander Hammond, James Madison, Gap, George Mason, anti-federalist Patrick Henry. So if you, there will be questions on CFAs and uh, district assessments in the star test asking who the, the most important federalists and anti-federalists are. So you got to know those. The last part is just some um, vocabulary. 
and you should be able to do this on your own. So I'm not going to sit here and give you the answers for that because I was nice and did a little matching. You just put the correct um, letter on here. But these are all terms of the Constitution that you need to know, right? All the principles of the Constitution, right? All these things make up our government. These are the rules and, and principles that our government goes by. So if you see these words brought up on a um, CFA or test, you have to be able to associate with them with the Constitution because it will list these words and expect you to know that. But um, hope you did good on this, and uh, we're going to play Kahoot soon.